And that component is short rib. Look. Look. Puttanesca with short rib. Oh, I like this. This sounds good. Puttanesca sauce with short ribs. Yeah. Great combination. Let's see. Oh, jeez. Look. Okay. I'm telling you, this short rib. That looks beautiful. That looks really good. That's a puttanesca. Taking it to the next level. Here's how we do this. There's our bowl, and here's our drained pasta. Shake, shake, and in. The beautiful bowl, Max. So, pasta should always be mixed with the sauce. In this video, we are reacting to Sam the Cooking Guy. He made pasta la puttanesca a few weeks ago, just after I share my pasta la puttanesca recipe. I like Sam the Cooking Guy. It's very nice. He's got a beautiful kitchen, and I like the way they film videos. But can you make puttanesca? Let's find out. The video is called Making One of the Most Legendary Pasta Recipes Ever. Sam the Cooking Guy. Today, we make it go even further up the list by adding one fabulous, simple component. Tell me, what is that? And that component is short rib. Look. Look. Puttanesca with short rib. Oh, I like this. This sounds good. Puttanesca sauce with short ribs. Yeah. Great combination. Let's see. Pasta puttanesca is tomatoes and capers yeah. and anchovy. <laughs> is tomatoes yeah. and capers and yeah. anchovies and mm -hmm. olives. The story goes that uh, many years ago in Italy, when the ladies of the night were finished working, they obviously built up some sort of appetite. They were, they were hungry. They'd go to the restaurants, but because it was late, you know, yeah. Late, the restaurants were finished with their regular stuff, starting to close down, but the restaurant owners were like, oh, Bella, please come, I'm all going to make you something. And they'd go in the back and they'd just, just good accent. throw together these handful of things, make it into a sauce and, and put it on the pasta. Great story. That's, the, that's true, 100%, and it's beautiful. Rich, delicious, full of umami. It's fantastic. Puta Nesca. Puta meaning lady of the night. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to add ground short rib to it. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, it's not a puttanesca anymore, but you didn't call it puttanesca in the title. This is great. I'm interested. Intrigued. Intriguing. Just to make it better. Make, make yeah. I believe you can make it better, but it's already perfect as it is. But yeah, let's take the puttanesca to the next level. Get a little hardier. Make it insanely insanely delicious and everything starts with us grinding our own short rib oh i could use a regular i love uh, this t-shirt make america cool again love it you know we've done this before you take slices of the short rib small enough to go into the feed tube in they go you push them down with something and not your fingers because you, you don't want to call it the feed tube it's the feed tube you push it down with something and not your fingers because you don't want to grind your fingers beautiful just nice when you do this by yourself at home of course you know the quality is going to be even better fingers out it comes onto your little tray keep going till you're done it's beautiful boy do i love grinding my own meat can't wait to put it in my feed tube i don't know the call it. That's what my mouth is, a feed tube. <laughs> and we go, we go. Oh, yeah, this is beautiful. So he's gonna cook the meat first. Oh, so with a few glugs of oil and then our beautiful short rib. And this, we want to get some color and start cooking through. And one of my favorite things when we use something that's not basic ground beef is the smell. And this, this, this is, yeah, you take it to the next level. This is not brisket, but still pretty amazing. And the, the yeah, this is, I agree. Oh, it will end up being cooked all the way through. We don't need it all the way at this point. We'll make a little space. Yeah, you just need to basically make it a little bit gray in color. It looks a little bit gray. Another squeeze of olive oil and then some garlic. Put that in. Nice amount of garlic. And, and some anchovies chopped up. And this is getting... This is so interesting. Yeah, so it's going to really add the flavor to this meat. I like where this is going. Going to build some amazing background flavor. And you usually see them like this. Just take them out and chop them up. And it will not... Yeah, yeah. Even if you don't chop them up, they actually break when you cook them. They break. They kind of uh, disappear. So you don't really need to chop them up. You just put them straight in there. It tastes like anchovies, I promise you. It'll just taste delicious. Yeah, it's true. When you cook... Look, I'm not a big fan of anchovies, but when you cook anchovies like this, they just add flavors. The anchovy texture and the things you don't like will disappear. The anchovy flavors, it's a bomb. It is a bomb. Oh!
Got a couple fat tablespoons of capers. I love them. Capers are beautiful, I love it. I love them. The briny deliciousness is the best. Yeah, okay. I agree, so good. A five ounce jar of whole pitted Kalamata olives, drained it. Yeah, look, in Italy they use a particular black olives from Italy, but it's hard to find. So the Kalamata olives, I think, are the perfect ones to use. So well done. It and chop, chop them, up. them up. In they go. Now, it's dry, isn't it? Yeah, it looks good, to be honest, but you do need the sauce, yeah. Let's fix that. I have a 28 ounce can of whole peeled tomatoes. Nice. Like this. Beautiful, that's what you want to do. Crush it by hand. That we're just going to break and drop in. If you didn't want to buy the whole ones, feel free to buy them already diced up, chopped. Yeah, no, no, buy like this because when it's diced, I think, I feel like they put a water or something in there. No, I don't like diced tomatoes. <laughs> bro, please, bro, why are you? You can blend peeled tomatoes when you make a sauce like this, a pasta sauce. Crush them is more rustic. Crushed by hand, you get a beautiful rustic texture, which I love. If you blend them, it's still okay for pasta. It's just that for the pizza, when you make pizza, you always want to crush by hand or with a crusher. Do not blend the tomatoes when you make pizza because you don't want it to be too wet. You want a rustic flavor. You want the tomato to cook in the oven and you want that, that texture of raw and crushed tomatoes when you have pizza up, crushed, whatever works. There's something about these ones that I really like. And yes, these are the San Marzano ones that- Oh, uh, very good quality. Stop, chopped, chopped up, up, crushed, whatever works. There's something about these ones that I really like. And yes, these are the San Marzano ones that are my faves, but you use what you want because in the end, no matter which ones you use, you're gonna be very close. Yeah, I guess, I mean, the, the flavors here are strong, so yeah. But you do want to use something good. And when you're all in, put the rest of the liquid in, wash your hand off, come back and stir everything together. We haven't seasoned yet, so we're going to add a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. If you're shy, you like uh, the spicy flavors. Shy about the heat, put in a half. But I think you're going to be very happy with what that does. And of course, we haven't seasoned yet, so we'll go with a big pinch of our BFF, kosher salt, pepper, granulated garlic. That didn't put much. I think it's a good amount. I know people go crazy with the salt. He's using a good amount of salt. And because you don't really use pecorino cheese or parmigiano on this type of pasta, well, you're actually using meat, so maybe you can put parmigiano. What I was going to say is if you don't use cheese at the end, you do want to put a little bit more salt. But I'm assuming, I believe, he's going to put some cheese on top of this pasta, yeah, because it's a meaty sauce. Garlic. And once everything's mixed, bring it to a little simmer, and we're gonna leave it for, oh, 15 minutes. Turn it, turn it. Yeah, it doesn't take long, it's very quick. Down a little bit, cover it with the lid to get magnificent. Remember those knives? When you cover with the lid, what you get is, you basically get the moisture going up, and then come back down, going up and down, up and down. So you keep the top moist, doesn't dry up. Inside, it says nice and moist because it's, it's a sauce. So that lid really helps to keep the sauce moist, not, it doesn't dry up. And with my little face looking at you and our simmering time done, oh, jeez, fuck. Okay, I'm telling you, this short rib... That looks beautiful, that looks very good. That's a puttanesca, taking it to the next level. ...has taken a delicious puttanesca to a whole new level. Only I agree, like it's a meaty puttanesca. It's not a traditional puttanesca. We're talking about being creative. So he made a meat puttanesca. Nothing wrong, it's clear. It's a meat puttanesca. It's beautiful. thing we need to do now... Get it on some pasta. Here's how we do this. There's our bowl, and here's our drained pasta. Shake, shake, and in. The beautiful bowl, Max. So, pasta should always be mixed with the sauce. Do not put the pasta in the plate first. Nobody should be doing this. It's 2024. If you didn't learn this by now, I'm a bit worried about you, okay? Guys, please do not do that. Pasta needs to be cooked. When it's ready, it goes straight in the pan with the sauce. Mix it with the sauce. In the pan with the sauce, not in the plate. You need the hot uh, pan, you need the heat. Combine all the ingredients together. You need a little bit of pasta water. You don't do it in there. You need to toss it, okay? The plate is not the right thing to do. You made such a beautiful sauce, do not ruin it at the end. One more. This is bucatini. I know it looks like spaghetti. And this is bucatini, I know. Spaghetti. Think of it as thicker spaghetti. Can you see that hole? Trust me, there's a hole in that. So now... Bucatini alla matriciana. Beautiful. I love bucatini for that. I'm not a big fan of bucatini. I don't know why, but uh, lots of people love bucatini. And I see people making bucatini in carbonara too. If you love bucatini, go for it. But because it's bucatini, it's a thick pasta, it's got a hole in there, you do need the sauce to go through the hole. You need the ingredients. You need, the, you need this pasta to really make clog with the sauce. And the plate cannot help you to do it. You need the pan. You need the saucepan. You need, you need to toss it. 
Oh, here's what we do. We bring our sauce back. Look how beautiful that pan is. I know it's heavy because you use cast iron. It's not easy to toss. Next time, don't use cast iron. Use stainless steel. Use no stick pan. It's gorgeous sauce. Cast iron is great for the sauce, but it's not great for tossing. Okay, just look at that. We give a couple good ones right here, and then we mix. Okay, so your goal is... Yeah, you need more. ...to get all the beautiful pieces of pasta nicely coated. And then again... Pasta water. Another one. So just mix, mix, mix. And when you got it where you want it, let's plate. And I'm going to say right now, I'm the... Oh my God, you go from one plate. Yeah, okay. You could have done it in the, in the pan. Worst at trying to make pasta look nice on a plate. The worst. It's okay. We don't worry about the presentation. Look, same. You've done a great, great sauce. The taste is what's important. We don't really care about presentation. I don't know why. I like that big swoop. Well, let's give you one more, shall we? It's a nice plate, too. Yes, let's get a little more sauce here, shall we? And this would not be complete without A, a little fresh Parmesan. See, he's, gonna, he's using the cheese, which is fine, because it's, I normally don't put cheese on the classic puttanesca, but it's a meat ragu done in no time. It's a great, great recipe. And why not? Parmigiano pecorino, yeah, why not? Good parm, not the junk prepackaged stuff. Nah, well done, Sam. You're my friend now, Sam. You're just a little parsley. Okay. And yeah, parsley is important for a puttanesca, yeah. This side. Beautifulness. Oh, man. Look, I am a huge puttanesca fan, but the. Me too. The addition of the short rub in here is going to make me really, really happy. And ju and just uh, you make me want to try this. It's a meat puttanesca. Let's not confuse the two. Classic puttanesca, unbeatable, like he said. Meat puttanesca, it's a great creation. I love it. He is not selling you this as a puttanesca. He's telling you, I added the ribs to the puttanesca. Taking the puttanesca to the next level. I love the idea. I love when people play like this. It's beautiful. It's nice. It, why not? You know, but he's not doing the puttanesca recipe the wrong way. He's just taking the puttanesca recipe to the next level. He used the right ingredients. He made a puttanesca with extra ribs. So it's a meaty puttanesca. Just look how fantastic. Why do I do this? Try and twist it all nice. There you go. It's beautiful. Uh, and don't judge him using the spoon. My nonno used to eat pasta with a spoon. Eating pasta with a spoon, yes, you need the knowledge, okay? You don't watch these stupid videos on TikTok where they say, ah, you don't eat pasta with a spoon. You do. I don't eat, I don't do, I use the fork. Growing up, watching my grandfather eating spaghetti in the spoon was just beautiful. It was really beautiful. I think it's classy, to be honest. But yeah, it's up to you. That's good. We've talked about umami before. It's that savory flavor, taste. This is so full of it, it's so packed. The capers, check. The anchovies, check. The olives, the whole thing. I get a little back of throat heat from the red pepper flakes. You must make it. Yeah, the chili, that's something, if you don't like spicy, you don't add that, but this, that spiciness, it goes very well with everything. And like you said, you know, you can feel it here. It adds to the experience. I know I say that a lot. If you ever hear me not say it, then what I just, I just made, made, I don't um, like. But I like, I like what, what we, we make, make so. so. Get in on it, Sparky. One of the greatest things ever. One of, this is, it's, it's transformative, the short rib. And if you only had regular ground beef, Go with it. Thanks for Hi, well, not everybody can as a grinder like you. That looks like a nice grinder. Just go to the butcher and ask for a good meat. But otherwise, just go to the supermarket, buy the regular minced beef. If you can get top quality meat, just go to the supermarket, buy grounded meat, beef. And like you said, use it. Those flavors, puttanesca flavors that you're adding to the meat will make any type of meat taste beautiful. Thanks for being here. Love you guys. So do Max and Chance. They do, they really do. All right, leave a, a like, a comment. Well done, Sam. Sam the Cooking Guy is a guy that I've been watching for a long time. You know, he started YouTube long before me. Very, very nice, passionate. He's a very good cook. I reacted to a few of his videos, but I have to say, he gave me the idea to make gnocchi cacio e pepe. His gnocchi cacio e pepe wasn't perfect. It was good, but he, he gave me the beautiful idea to make gnocchi cacio e pepe, so I will always be grateful to him. And today, he made this beautiful recipe, which I cannot wait to try. And I'm pretty sure I will be even more grateful to Sam, the cooking guy. A channel that you need to subscribe if you haven't done it yet, because he is a genuine, passionate cook, and he's a very nice guy. So I've been supporting him for a long time, and I hope you do too.
Guys, thank you so much. Please write a comment below. Let me know what videos I should react to. I enjoy reacting to, uh, to good and bad videos. If you send me good videos, that would be best because I want to have fun. I want to enjoy watching videos. I don't want to be angry and cranky. <laughs> so thank you so much. I will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate reaction video. E ora si mangia. Sam the cooking guy, puttanesca recipe. Take it to the next level.